Hello, welcome to my reading log for April of 2024. And I didn't read as many volumes this month as I went to Japan and I didn't read anything whilst I was there or for a couple of days beforehand and a couple of days after getting back. So I only ended up reading like a total of 15 volumes this month, which I, my average is about 20 to 25, whereas this month I only read 15. So anyway, let's get on with the reading log. So on the 1st of April, I read Imakai Volume 9, which is the final volume. I gave this three and a half stars. It ended like... I did, in, I did quite like the ending. But yeah, it's a high school romance. There's not a lot of drama. The couples, like... Get together quite fast and yeah it, it ended in like the way you would expect the series to end uh, it's just a nice calm relaxed fluffy series and yeah i overall i did enjoy it it's not the best thing i've ever read but it's certainly not the worst and yeah overall i think i would give the series a 7 out of 10. i did enjoy it enough for a 7 it was cute but yeah there's not really much to talk about with the series so even though i have finished it now <laughs> moving on on the um second i read the second volume of i can't refuse s and i gave this one female hot stars too i didn't quite enjoy this volume as much as i enjoyed volume one but i still like the volume i like the art style as well yeah we it's a seamship type art so we follow this woman she, her family's in debt and to pay off the debt she wants to become a mistress to this rich dude but this his book was like he's not going to accept you because you've not got any experience you're still a virgin and all that so i'm going to train you and if you let me train you i can make you be a good mistress and then he'll accept you and he'll pay off your debts so the series is about the butler training her to become a good mistress and obviously she's starting to develop some feelings for the butler but obviously she knows she can't actually be with him because he's just training her to be with somebody else. But yeah, I do enjoy the series. This volume wasn't quite as good as the first one, but I did still like it. And obviously, there's, there's smut in here. Next, I read another Steamship title on the 4th. I didn't read anything on the 3rd. That's Ladies on Top, volume 5. This is the penultimate volume, volume 6 is the final volume. This one doesn't have a lot of smut in it, like they do like have sex obviously, but it's not very explicit. It's not as explicit as you would expect from an a steamship title anyway, it's quite censored. But it is pretty obvious what they're doing. The Ladies on Top is about this woman who likes to be dominant in the bedroom and she ends up dating this guy who likes to be submissive in the bedroom so like she's the one on top yeah it's, a, it's an enjoyable series i do like it i think the smut is a bit on the lesser side of the smut spectrum but yeah it's still it's still an enjoyable read and the next one is the final one this volume we saw what did i score this oh i gave it a three and a half in this volume we saw our couple going to introduce the guy i don't remember his name obviously to her family her parents and her younger brother and there's a, like some stuff with the younger brother and him and the guy and stuff like that yeah it was another good volume and looking forward to reading the final one next on the fifth I read Insomniac After School Volume 4. Again, I very really enjoyed this volume. I gave this one four stars. We follow two high schoolers who both have insomnia and they start. We, their, their school had like an observatory club which shut down due to racket members, and these two have like restarted the club. So they're going out at night. He likes photography, so he's taking pictures of the stars. He's trying to like enter into this contest. They're also trying to get more members to join the club so it won't get shut down again. So they're trying to like put on this an event to recruit more members. So yeah, it's like it's a cute 
Size of Life series with some romance. It's it is very good. If you like Size of Life and you like romance, I would definitely recommend checking it. It's on the Axe Out of School out. It is a good one. I think it ended at 12 volumes. But yeah. Is this the Yeah. This volume is concentrating mostly on trying to recruit, like, put on an event to recruit members to the ob observatory club so they don't have to shut the club down again like they originally did. Yeah, I do very really like this series. Next, on the 6th and the 7th, it took me a couple of days to get through this one. Pretty sweet, volume 2, I gave this one 4 stars. My, it may look like my, the same length as a normal manga, but this is a manhwa, and manhwa are quite dense, and they have more pages than what it looks like, so it does take me a bit longer to read them. But yeah, this is the halfway point. Buddy Sweet, Buddy, Buddy Sweet was split into like two seasons on Webtoon, and the first season ends at this volume, and then volume three and four will be season two. But yeah, I enjoyed this volume as much as I liked the first one. I'd say I didn't think I'd love the series as much as I did when I first read it because the type of like character the vampire is, I don't normally like his character type. Like they like cringy I think golden retriever boys that kinda of called. I don't usually like his character type, but I did end up maybe liking the series anyway. I actually don't mind him as much as I thought I would. Yeah, I we also we got a lot of his backstory in this one. We also, there's also definitely trigger warnings for bullying. There was some quite intense bullying in this, especially for, our main girl here is bullied, especially by one of her classmates. I can't remember her classmate's name, but she, yeah, she's she's rather terrible. I, I do not like her at all. Yeah, trigger warnings for bullying, but this is a great series. It's one of the few man marks that I'm actually reading at the minute. I've also read Rayliana, but and Omnipotent Reader's Viewpoint are the other, are the only other two I have right now. I do want to try more manual, but not so much the Viraness Isekai ones because that's not really my thing, but more like the like the sort of see you in my 19th life business proposal what's wrong with security kim like that type of man well rather than the ruinous isekai type but i'm already reading Ray Rihanna and i only really want to be reading one isekai man because like isekai although i like some of them it's not like really my genre especially not when it's ruinous yeah i do it i do enjoy buddy speed it's very good it's, it's vampires. Anyway, next, I didn't read anything from the 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th, 13th, 14th, 15th, 16th, 17th, or 18th. But then on the 19th, I read Whoever Steals This Book, Volume 1. I gave this four stars. I really like this one. I thought this was good. It's like a urban fantasy magical realism sort of series where we have our main, uh, our main girl is the descendant of someone who was a book collector and he collected lots of books and now his collection is like super famous and the, her family has been taking care of the collection for what I think it was like her great grandfather so her grandparents, her parents and uh, take care of the um, books and obviously it will eventually fall to her to do this so currently like she lives in a town of books because of the collection was so famous that they opened it to the public and it made the town like famous for books. But then they closed the collection again because books kept getting stolen. This was when her grandmother was in charge, but now her grandmother's since passed on and her father and aunt are kind of both in charge of looking after the books. So her father also works for the dojo and he's currently in the hospital from an injury. And she's been tasked with going to visit her aunt at the library sort of book collection place and drop off food for her and stuff because her aunt doesn't really like leaving so she goes there and when she's there she finds out that 
some of the books has been stolen and then there's fox girl wolf girl i'm not sure i think she, she's like the fox or wolf it shows up and hands her this book and they end up like going inside of the book but not maybe because it's more like the book and the real world have kind of merged together and the reason this has happened is because it's like a curse that is put on the book so if anyone who's not a member of their family takes them out of the library this is it triggers so she now has to find the thief who stole the book in order to get the town back to normal and it keeps happening with different books as well so once she's done with one she'll go into another and we don't know who the thief is yet we don't know who's been stealing the books but i did really like this first volume and it's a it's a short series it's only going to be three volumes in total but yeah i i think it's got quite mixed reviews but i really enjoyed it there's a little fox there but yeah and our main character actually despises books she hates that her family's known for books and that she has to live in a town of books but she through doing this she's kind of coming to appreciate them more and we still don't know much about this girl either and what she actually is and who she is but yeah i really enjoyed it and i'm looking forward to reading the other two volumes and i think it might be based on a light novel i'm not sure though Next, on the 20th, I read Love a Kitten and a Salty Dog. This is a one-shot BL. I gave it four stars. I really love this one. I've been reading a few one-shot BLs lately, and a few of them have been like, eh, it's okay, or it, it's kind of boring. But this one was very good. This one had a cute relationship between these two main characters, it had some smut in there too and it also has some drama so like it's a one shot so you'd expect it to be like them get together quite quick but in this one there's actually quite a bit of drama and then kind of um takes a bit for them to get together so yeah i really like this one so this guy here is a vet and then this guy here he finds a kitten and he brings the kitten to the vet to get looked at. And he can't keep the kitten himself because his apartment doesn't allow pets. But he's asked if the kitten can remain at the vet until they can find a home for it. But he said, we can keep the kitten here, but you have to come visit it every day. So every day he's going to visit the kitten and he's seeing him. And he has a crush on him. He thinks he's really cute. He's exactly his type. So, like, he doesn't want to... He's kind of, kind of trying to hide his feelings of him. But then the other guy flirts a bit with him and then... They end up kissing and then drama happens and it, it was good. It was good. And there's a golden retriever on the back and he is cute. He is the vet's dog. Yeah, this was this was a good one. This was a one shot BL. One of the better ones I've read in a while and I would definitely recommend this one. I loved it. Next, on the 21st, I read Kage-sama Lover's War 27. This, I gave this four stars. This is also the penultimate volume. Like, we finished, like, the main big scenario in the previous volume, and now these last two volumes are just, like, winding everything down and, like, tying everything up and bringing it to a close. So we're getting a bit more closure about Kaguya and Miyuki, obviously, but also you story and what's her face she's not on this cover but this me to me i forget her name but this girl will i think we're going to find out more about them in the next volume and then chica's just chica we had the conclusion to the lawman king's arc in this volume so yeah every this one and the next one's kind of just the main storyline is done it's over everything's sorted out we're just like tying off the loose ends and bringing all the other storylines and stuff to a close now so i'm looking forward to reading the final volume and seeing how the series ends and seeing whether she and you actually do get together looking forward to seeing that yeah i like kagi summer it's one of my favorite sayings there's also a chapter in this where they play minecraft 
And you get like the boxy card. <laughs> And then on the 22nd, I read Usatoki Rhetoric Volume 5, which I gave three and a half stars. This volume had a... Well, this volume... It didn't really have a mystery. The, the last, like, couple of chapters were solving a mystery, but the first few were more like... Yeah, the first chapter was a very short mystery revolving around a hairpin. And then I guessed the um, outcome to that one straight away, though. And then the next part was more about her mother coming to visit, and there wasn't really a mystery there. And then the last couple of chapters were a mystery revolving around two people who are possibly this, there's this old woman, and she wants them to try and figure out which one of these two people is her actual grandson. So that's the final mystery of figuring of figuring out which one and it's kind of like a character introduced so I think he's going to be kind of reoccurring so yeah I did enjoy this volume my favorite volume so far is still the doll mystery one I loved that one that volume was great but we're now halfway through the series there's only 10 volumes next up I didn't read anything on the 23rd and then on the 24th I read South at the end volume 28 which I gave three and a half stars this volume was a lot of like fighting. There's like one wrong battle going on between two characters who I won't say because it's this point of the series, everything's a spoiler. But we also get a bit more backstory revolving around Ashramaru and Cruel. That's why these two are on the cover because you get like kind of more backstory on these two. And then the rest of the volume, that is not, like, the backstory. is kind of the fighting between these two characters. Yeah, it was a good volume. Not my favourite volume, but definitely still a good volume. I do like that for the end. I do like this cover, too. It's a very nice cover. So at the end has been having some very nice covers lately. It used to be, like, just a single character on the cover of every volume, but... The latest volumes have been having some very nice covers. Next, I read, on the 25th, I read Stray Cat and Wolf. 25? 2! <laughs> and I gave it 4 stars. I really like the series. I love volume 1 and I really like this volume 2. It is an age gap, so if you don't want to read an age gap, don't read this. So we have a musician. He's a lady killer. He lives on his own. He has... He doesn't have a girlfriend, but he has several people who he's playing around with. And then we have this high school girl who runs away from her hometown because no one there likes her because she's like the her father's child to a... I don't think they actually know who her mother is, but... Her father, she lived in this town with her father and her grandmother, but then her father passed and her grandmother's not great with her. So she runs away from home and goes to live in Tokyo... She gets kicked out of her apartment because the Reese runs out and she has nowhere to go. So she collapses on the street due to heat stroke and he picks her up, takes her home. And now she's kind of living with him. And she's like kind of falling for him as well. But yeah, she is, I think, 16 and I think he is 24. So there is an age gap there, which I'm not bothered about, but some people will be. But yeah, it's by the same author as um, Cheeky Brat. And Spring Storm a Monster, which is getting a English release soon by Yen Press. The Yen Press seems to get all of this creator series. Yeah, I like I enjoyed this one. It was a good volume. Looking forward to see where things are going next with um the thing that going on at the end. Next, I read volume 14 of Mal, which I gave three and a half stars. I did enjoy this volume. We had Nanaka was doing more in this volume. She was fighting some demony thing out the well, and she's actually, like, helping Mal out and not needing to be, like, rescued by him all the time anymore. She's got her sword. She's learning to use the sword, and then we had stuff with... Yeah, the village. Was it the village after that? 
Oh yeah, I'm it's the yeah. Cursed people and then the verge. Yeah, it was a it was a good volume. This series I've got I think I've had volume fifteen too, I haven't read it yet because this the series just seems to be coming out very fast. Next on the twenty seventh I read The Secret of Friendship. I gave this three stars. I didn't hate it, but I didn't love it either. I just thought it was okay. So it's more of like two sets of friends. And like my favourite chapter is probably the second chapter. But we have these two girls here who are best friends and they've been best friends since I think either the end of middle school or the start of high school. And then we have two these two guys here who are also best friends. But which she is like obsessed with her friend and she's like if I'm going to get a boyfriend that boyfriend needs to be just as obsessed with my friend as I am and they need to take care of my friend more so than they take care of me so like most boys are scared off by this but then this guy agrees to it and starts dating her and the friend and it doesn't go great and things happen and then this other guy who is his best friend is kind of going for the other girl but yeah it was alright this the girl with the orange hair I didn't like her all that much she was a bit controlling and bossy towards her friend and like whenever they hung out together they always had to do what she wanted to do and if the other one made a suggestion of what she wanted to do then she would just change her mind be like one right oh I want ramen well, I want, like, sushi, like, but instead of, like, coming to a compromise and doing what one wants and then maybe next time doing what the other one wants, it's always what she wants and she always has to convince her friend to want the same thing as her and I didn't maybe like her that much. But I did kind of like some aspects of it. But, yeah, there was also a short story in the back. What was the short story again? There was a short story in the back called I'll Go Check On Him, which is about a girl who she's found out her friend's boyfriend is cheating on her, so she has to go and investigate whether the rumours of the cheating are true, so she's sneaking around watching the, her f best friend's boyfriend to see if he's cheating, and then this guy's helping her out. It was, it was decent. It was okay. But yeah, I'm pretty sure this is by the same, either the artist or the author of high school debut but yeah it was okay i it wasn't amazing it wasn't terrible it was just okay next up on the 28th i read to your eternity volume 19 which is like three and a half stars this volume ends the arc the present day arc so we had the like one arc at the beginning and then this is like the second part of the story where and this part of the story is now ended but there's going to be a third part of the story called the future arc and i'm kind of looking forward to seeing where that's going to go but yeah i like the way this arc kind of wrapped up and ended up but the series once again hasn't ended it's going to continue into another arc this arc might possibly be the last one because i don't see where they can go past that point so yeah, we got to learn some more stuff about the man in black. Things were wrapped up with the modern day characters and yeah, I did like this volume. And the last thing I read this month, which took me a couple of days to get through because it's quite thick, is I read it on the 29th and the 30th and that's I'll Never Be Your Crown Princess Volume 3. This is a, I gave this one four stars. Another steamship title, but this volume, this volume, the series itself has smut, but this volume itself did not have any. That's why it wasn't plastic wrapped. But yeah, there's absolutely no smut in this volume, so. There's a new character introduced, and he's like an assassin, and he's now working for her, and I quite liked him. And I think he's, this is the end, this is the final volume of this series but it's not the final volume because it's going to be a sequel called Betrothed which I think is going to be based off the second right novel but yeah he went away to 
battle. And he wasn't in the volume that much. It's a part... He was in it at the first few chapters and then he didn't come back into it until the end and she was, like, rescuing this guy who was an assassin and learning a bit more about some abilities that she may or may not have. And, yeah, I did write this volume. It was, like, setting up more of a story. And I'm looking forward to continuing on with the sequel series. But, yeah, that's everything I read this month in April. 15 volumes. I'd say I went away, so less than normal. But I still read quite a bit. And I enjoyed most of what I read. So I hope you enjoyed the video. And I will um, be doing a video again at some point. And, yep, see you then. And bye.